Hey there, I'm Sourcemake and welcome to the video on C++ Move Semantics and R Value References. And I'm going to try to explain these topics very simply because they build on top of each other, but we're going to do it kind of quickly. So in this video, we are going to explain what L values and R values are. We are going to explain what R value references are, and you can see that we have some code, so we're going to see some actual examples. We are going to explain std move, which is just a standard library function, which is going to help us out. And finally, we are going to talk about what move semantics actually are, and we're going to see an actual example of why move semantics are better than just not using move semantics at all. So, um, all of these resources, this code, and the pictures are going to be on my website. You can click the link below this video to get to this webpage if you want to just read this yourself. And while you're down there, hit the subscribe button for my YouTube channel. Thanks. So, um, as a prerequisite, you should already know about pointers and references. They're a really basic topic. If you don't know about them, I have a blog post that teaches about them, and I just made a video about it. So, um, there will be a link to this webpage too if you need to get started below the video. So, just you should know what a reference is. And with that in mind, let's talk about what L values and R values are. Now, let's keep this really simple. L values and R values are category types that describe variables. So an L value is stored in memory and will exist on the next line of code. It exists on the next line of code. An R value is temporary and won't exist on the next line of code. And to see some examples, you can see right here, int A. A is uninitialized, but A itself exists on the next line of code, so it's an L value int b equals 5. Now this one is a little more complicated. b is an L value because it does exist on the next line of code, but 5 is temporary. It, it's an R value. We're not going to see 5 after we use this line of code, so um, what's going to happen is memory is going to get overridden on it later on, or it, we, we just don't care about it later on. So that's an R value. Now here's another example. string s equals source string, and this source string is just a function which is going to return an R value. And so this is going to be temporary, and that's why this is an R value, and S is an L value because it exists on the next line. Now we're going to go into this in detail in the next section, so don't worry about that too much. But the rule of thumb, which isn't entirely accurate, but it's gonna for our purposes, it's good enough. If it can be on the left side of an equal sign, it's an L value, if you can assign something to it. Otherwise, it's an R value. That's just a general rule of thumb. It's, it's not, you know, perfect, but that's what's going to get us through this next section. So now we're going to talk about R value references. Now you should remember that a reference uses the AND sign, the ampersand sign, and it means that a variable refers to something else that already exists in memory. So if we go to this other blog post, we can see that um, if you do something like int A equals 5 and int reference B equals A, a and B are talking about the same thing in memory, the same five that exists in memory. Now that only works, that one and sign, for L value references. If you use the double ampersand sign, then that means you, you're talking about an R value reference specifically for R values, which we just talked about. So as an example, we'll go through this code right here, and you can see we have the same function um, source string that returns an R value reference. This time, let's, let's look very carefully at what happens. Now, string A equals source string. I can actually make this a little bigger um, for this particular section. Well, it's just a little bit smaller than that. So source string equals, um, string A equals source string. And what is going to happen here is it's going to copy this. So we're going to call this source um, string function, and it's going to create this, this returns an R value string in memory. And what's going to happen is another block of memory for the variable named A is going to be created in memory, and A is going to copy the contents of source string, the actual function call, into A. So um, remember, we, we have two copies here. We have copy um, of source string, which is temporary, and then we have the actual block of memory for string A, which is going to copy the contents of source string into it. That's the non-reference way. Now, if we look at this other line of code, string ampersand ampersand b, which is the R value reference way, we are also going to call source string, but this isn't going to do a copy. 
So what's going to happen is source string is going to return this string. This returns an R value, this string right here in memory. This is going to be allocated in memory. But what's going to happen is B is going to say, you know what? I'm not going to initialize my own block of memory for the string B. All I'm going to do is refer to the same block of memory that source string is talking about. So there's no actual copy going on for string B. It's just saying B is going to refer to the same source string that exists right here. And that's an R value reference. Remember, this is an R value reference. And that's a really powerful concept. Remember, you can still do editing to it because it still exists in memory and you can still call it with B, but we're not doing the copy this way, which is more important, which is really good. So, that is R value references. You just use this sign and you're talking about a reference to an R value, which is just a temporary value, which normally wouldn't exist on the next line of code. Now, std move is the next thing we need to talk about. std move is a standard library function from, you know, std, which is going to take an L value or an R value and it's going to cast it to an R value. So no matter, so no matter what, it's going to cast it to an R value. Why is that useful? Well, um, well, let's look at an example really quickly. So we've got some code right here, and we've got two overloaded functions named do something. The first one takes a reference to an integer a. The second one takes um, an r value reference with the double ampersand sign for the integer a. The only difference is one ampersand sign, but it's overloaded. That's what overloading is. So you can see in main that what we're going to do is we're going to um, declare an integer variable named source make and we're going to set it equal to 5. Now we're going to call do something two times. The first time we're just going to call um, do something with just a variable itself. And this is going to call in L value reference. So it's going to um, just, you know, call the normal reference way. But what std move is going to do is it's going to cast this source make variable into an R value reference. And so what's going to happen is it's going to call this overloaded function in our value reference because the move just, you know, it casts it to an R value reference. Simple, right? All std move does is cast it, um, cast a variable and object to an R value reference so that you can do special things with it. Now we've been building up to this, but this is really important because this talks about what move semantics actually is. Now, move semantics is a very simple concept, but implementing it is hard. Move semantics is this. Copying is expensive. And if we don't care about what happens to the value of a variable or object after using it, then we can use our value references. And I misspelled references, but... So, um, that's the concept, but what does this actually mean? How do we actually code this? The way you actually use move semantics is through a special move constructor and assignment operator that will be called instead of the copy constructor or copy assignment operator. And this is um, when you're building your classes, this is what you do. So um, if you know the rule of three, that means that whenever you make a class, you should make a destructor, a copy constructor, and a copy assignment operator for, for the class. Well, this turns um, your class into a rule of five. You should do two extra things. You should make a move constructor and a move assignment operator. That's basically what move semantics is. So I know that was really vague. So let's go through this actual example to see what's going on. So here's the example. Um, let's make this a little bit smaller. Can we make it even smaller than this? Yeah, you can kind of see what's going on. Okay. So here's what swapping by copy looks like. Um, and I know it's a little small, but it's okay. So we have this void swap function and it's a template parameter. So we have some type T, could be an integer, could be a vector, don't know. Um, hopefully the container or whatever we're using has a, you know, something defined for the copy constructor because we're gonna call it. But, but here, here's a swap function. On line two, what do we have? We have A and B and they might be different things. You can see A is blue and B is red. On line four, what happens? Well, we call a copy constructor and we're going to declare this thing named temp and temp is going to be the same thing as A using the copy constructor. So what happens is in RAM, in memory, we are going to declare this variable named temp and it's going to have the same contents as A, which is why they're both blue, A and, A and temp are blue. In line five, what happens? Well, we're going to assign B to A. 
I don't know if that's the right way to say it. But, but basically, whatever is inside of A is going to be whatever is inside of B. So A is going to be a copy of B. So A is now red. And the next line, in line 6, B equals temp. So B is going to be whatever is inside of temp. So now B turns into blue because temp is blue. And in line 7, temp falls out of um, scope. So the temp variable, you know, it just disappears. And now we have A and B, and they were swapped successfully. Now this is, you know, normal. It's very normal in coding to do this. But, you know, if, if you have a very large container, like if class T is a really large container, it's a vector with like a million objects in it, you don't want to have all this space and RAM taken up like that. That's really inefficient. So what move semantics does is instead of calling the copy operator, the copy constructor, if your class has a move constructor, you can call that instead. And we can do some magic to make sure that we, we don't actually have to assign anything else in memory. How does this look? Well, we've got this other, you know, um, swap function defined here. And, and this is what this swap function does. The same thing on line two, we have A and B and they exist in memory. But on line four, we have something a little different. We're still calling this temp um, variable that we're going to make. But what is it going to do? Instead of actually calling the copy constructor, we're going to cast A to an R value reference. Now that A is an R value reference, A's, um, A's move constructor is going to be called instead of the copy constructor. And hopefully, in this particular example, what we're going with, temp is actually going to refer to the same thing as A in memory. There's no extra temp variable getting generated in memory. What it's just going to do is it's going to refer to the same thing in A in this particular example. So what happens next is A is going to refer to the same thing as B because it's going to call B's move constructor. So you can see on line 5 right here, A and B refer to the same thing in memory. Still, there's no extra variable generated. I mean, there is an extra variable. There's no extra stuff in RAM generated. Then in line 6, B is going to call the move constructor for temp. So B is going to refer to the same thing as temp, which in this case is this blue stuff right here. And finally, on line 7, temp falls out of scope. And so um, temp doesn't exist anymore. But B and A still do, and they do end up being swapped. Now, you can see in this example, it depends on the implementation of the move constructor. That's what I'm telling you. But this is kind of what move semantics is. Instead of copying, which would normally be expensive by calling the copy constructor, you call the move constructor or the move assignment operator, and you don't really care about what happened afterward or you do some hand wavy magic, but you can do things more efficiently than you would by just copying. And it doesn't have to be a move constructor or move assignment operator. Maybe you could have some like special operators like a plus function that implements move or you know our value references the whole point of move is you, you kind of either want to do something special or you don't care about what happens to the variable afterward um and, and yeah so i know that was kind of a lot to take in and it, it's still kind of vague even though we went through an example of why it would be better the way we're going to actually learn this is in another video we're going to implement um, our own vector class by implementing the rule of five and that'll teach us how we can actually write some code with move semantics in mind. So I'm going to make a vector class and, and show the code in another video. So make sure you hit the subscribe button um, to see that. Hopefully you like this video. If you do, leave a comment. And I'm sure some people are, are C++ experts and, and they're yelling at me, no, that's not what an R value is. R values are different or, or we're talking about things differently here. If you are like that and you see a problem, leave a comment. You can read the comments and hopefully you can teach each other. But for an introduction, this should explain what um, move semantics is. Because when I looked at the resources online, I didn't see anything that really helped me. But, ho but hopefully this helps you at least get into the topic. So I'm Source Make. Make sure you uh, subscribe, leave a comment and like. And thanks for watching.